Hey guys, and welcome to a new video here with me, NG Paradox. This video is here because a new video was just released by Total War, and this video has got me more excited for a Total War game than any other trailer for Total War has ever done before. They've just announced the new historical Total War, and it's going to be Total War Free Kingdoms. Now, if you don't know what that means, basically, there's a period of history known as the Free Kingdoms period in Chinese history. Um, it's a very famous book written about the event known as Romance of the Free Kingdoms, which is one of the five classical Chinese novels, including that with um, Journey to the West. And obviously, many of you probably know this historical date thanks to the game series of Dynasty Warriors, which obviously has been around for a long time. Most people have seen it or played it, and the story told in that is the one of the Free Kingdoms. And the reason I'm excited for this is because the Free Kingdoms period is an extremely interesting story and period. Um, I mean, I kind of expected this. When Total War, you know, Creative Assembly, they did say a while ago it was going to be something new, a new area they'd never done before, and they were going to use what they've learned from Total War Warhammer for the next series. And to me, that screamed Free Kingdoms. You know, it's a completely new place, a new era. But most importantly, when you're thinking of Warhammer, what have they learned from Warhammer? It's kind of the different factions of the different legendary lords. And Free Kingdoms is perfect for that. It is brimming with interesting, diverse, and crazy characters. So this is actually the perfect choice to go on from Warhammer, and I have to admit, I never thought I'd see the day they would do this, and so I'm really excited to see what they do. So we're just going to take a quick look at the trailer. I'm not going to go through the whole trailer, I'm just going to show you bits and pieces and break down what it is we are seeing, and most importantly, who we are seeing. Because you've got to remember, guys, the most important thing about this series is probably going to be the characters. Very similar to the Total War series. And obviously it's set in China, so it's likely just gonna be different factions in China, um, which obviously can be very diverse. China is a massive nation, but you're not gonna see different countries. I would be very surprised if they're gonna do things like, you know, Japan or anywhere else um, outside China. Maybe the northern kind of uh, hordes, like, you know, Mongolians and stuff, that could be a possibility but I don't think anywhere else. That's just my opinion, but they haven't given us any information apart from this trailer. So first off, I'm going to quick look at the 30 second mark. If we click here, the first man we get to see is this. Kind of before that, it kind of goes through the army. You see like a battle, a siege going on. You see lots of people. But like I say, the people to me aren't that important for this because in this series, you know, a lot of the armies are going to be quite similar, though, like I said, they can be distinct due to the size of China. It's, you know, China's almost the same size as, like, Europe in some ways. So it's going to be distinct in its own ways, but maybe not too much. Now, this guy here, the first guy we see, is very big and round. And we can see right behind him here, there's a, a distinguishing little, uh, shall we say, hat for this man here. So I would say the only man this guy could be is Dong Zhao. Now, if you don't know who Dong Zhao is, Dong Zhao was a eunuch uh, for the emperor during this time period. And after the Yellow Turban Rebellion, the Yellow Turban Rebellion was a rebellion um, throughout China, was pretty big, led by, if I remember, kind of a religious uh, man or said he could do magic or something. That's a weird thing. Sometimes it's hard for me to remember the exact things because it's been romanticized a lot. Romance of the Three Kingdoms, I've read that, but the stories obviously are romanticized. Made a little bit special, maybe a bit of magic, hearsay here and there of what people thought happened. So it's kind of hard sometimes to know exactly what happened. But this is obviously Dong Zhao, the eunuch who kind of took hold of the court of the emperor and had his faithful shall we say, lackey, Lu Bu. Run, it's Lu Bu. You, if you play Dynasty Warriors, you know exactly what I mean. Lu Bu is one of the fiercest warriors during this time period. Um, he is unstoppable. And with him, 
behind Dong Zhao. No one could stand against him. So this is going to be just a thing. Maybe they're saying we're going to start with this. Maybe we're not going to have Yellow Turban Rebellion, which would be a shame. The Yellow Turban Rebellion is quite interesting, but I guess it's less important to the whole Warlord part of the whole thing. So it wouldn't surprise me if we do start just with Dong Zhao taking over the court. Uh, if we go to 37 here as well, you can see a really nicely done artistic drawing of Lu Bu taking down Dong Zhou's enemies. It's definitely Lu Bu. I like the design. At first when I saw it, I wasn't completely sure it was Lu Bu, but it has to be um, based upon the rest of the trailer. And also, I think it's kind of nice he looks a bit different because a lot of people are going to imagine Dynasty Warriors. That is what a lot of people are going to picture. And looking at the models, they've made them slightly different, which I think is really good. They don't want to try and make it too similar to Dynasty Warriors, even in look. Um, Dong Zhao obviously is a bit harder to do because he's a big eunuch of the Imperial Court. He's going to look like that. Uh, then straight away after this, we lead on to maybe the heroes of our story. Um, but I, I had to stop at this picture. This picture is great. You can see... I'm assuming this is still Dong Zhao. He looks a bit older there, but you can see that he's behind the young emperor. Basically, the emperor is at his mercy. The emperor can't do anything, and Lu Bu standing in the shadows to strike anyone who would go against him. It's a really good picture, an image of what is going on. So even if you don't know the story, this picture can tell you a lot about what's happening at this situation in time. But then we need to go to the heroes. Sorry, I just love that picture. Next up would be the heroes of the story. These guys are, you could say, the baddies. I mean, it depends what you think. He's just a, a maybe a nice unit. No, he's a terrible man. He's a terrible man, does terrible things. And then we lead to this. This right here is, shall we say, the heroes of the story. If you read Three Kingdoms, this man here in the center, uh, Lu Bei, He's kind of seen as the hero character. He is extremely nice. Um, too nice, in fact. There's no way this man was this nice. It's impossible. Um, he just cares too much about the people. And during this time of chaos and strife throughout China, these three men meet. Uh, Lu Bei. This must be Zhang Fei because he's a bit, he's a bit rounder. Uh, loves the drink. He's a very angry man sometimes. And then over here you've got Guan Yu. Now the Guan Yu model, you have there is definitely an iconic image of Guan Yu. Um, he's everywhere in China. People in China will even pray to him because um, he can give. He's meant to be there for like honor and loyalty. A lot of businesses might have him in their shop, um, and a lot of gangs apparently will also use him as a way to kind of join the gang because he's a sign of loyalty. So he's a very important man in Chinese history, and he's kind of, th these two here, Zhang Fei and Guan Yu, are two of the other uh, most amazing warriors during this period. Liu Bei is more the leader. He is the man that people look up to, and these are kind of his two arms, you could say. Um, but yes, if we get a better look at them, maybe when they turn around, you can see here, the models look Slightly different to Dynasty Warriors and other places you might have seen them. Um, Zhang Fei here and Guan Yu. They both look a little bit older. There seems to be a little bit of silver in their hair, which surprises me because when they first meet, I don't think they're that old. So I'm not completely sure why they've done that. They have their iconic weapons, which is great to see. Really nice details overall. And like I said, I do like the fact they look a little bit different from other mediums of this time period. Uh, Lu Bei looks kind of what you expect, uh, but these three are meant to be the iconic heroes, even if Zhang Fei isn't... He's not really the nicest of guys, to be honest. He's a drunk, he's a bully, but you know, these guys keep him in line. So this is the one a lot of people I think when we play in as. Uh, then we lead on from there. They're making their vow of being blood brothers in the Peach Garden, an iconic moment. So I, I really like how they've captured the story. Like this is a really short trailer, like two minutes, and most of the trailer doesn't show much. But when they do show stuff, it really grabs what's important. And you can see the people here following them. You know, the people will follow Lu Bei and his two um, iconic warriors to the ends of the earth, basically. 
And when we go on from there, we lead on to this man. So this man is obviously a strategist. You can see he's not holding a weapon or anything. He seems to be at court. People seem to respect him. He comes to the table, and it's obviously delving into strategy. I would assume this man here is Cao Cao. Now, the reason I say that, at first when I saw the trailer, I thought it was Zhuge Liang. Now, Zhuge Liang is the strategist of Lu, Lu Bei, and he is ridiculously smart, and he's one of the greatest strategists um, in Chinese history. A lot of people in China love him. He's probably most people's favorite character from this time period and the books. Um, but I realize it probably is not him. Now, the main reason for that is because as we go along, he starts strategizing with the men. So for some reason, I thought it was Zhuge Liang, but it has to be Cao Cao because number one, he's kind of, everyone seems to be respecting him a lot more. And it seems to be, this is in preparation for the battle with Dong Zhao, the eunuch, and Lu Bu. Now, Zhuge Liang was not involved in the battles against Dong Zhao and Lu Bu. Cao Cao was, though. So I'm going to assume this is Cao Cao. Plus, you can't make a Free Kingdoms trailer with no Cao Cao. There has to be Cao Cao in the trailer or people would go crazy. Uh, no one's going to see a trailer. And you can see the men here is going to be obviously the iconic battles of Total War, which really does fit into the time period. There's the smaller skirmishes, but the massive battles and conquests as the kingdoms kind of form up with the warlords gaining power. We can see Dong Zhou, not a fighter, of course. Yeah, he's not that type of man. But Lu Bu, surprisingly not riding a horse. Um, usually, I think in most mediums, they show him riding a horse. He has a very famous horse um, known as Red Hair. I'm wondering if they're going to actually include the kind of quest items. In Warhammer, obviously, with the quest items and stuff that each legendary lord can try to get. And in this sort of story... There are a lot of iconic weapons and horses and stuff, but there's not lots. I mean, there's things like, you know, Guan Yu's weapon, Zhang Fei's, Lu Bu's weapon, and obviously Lu Bu has his horse Red Hair, which is one of the most famous horses of this time period. Um, but surprisingly, they don't show him on a horse. So that, that did surprise me. But then again, you know, he is a ridiculously strong man. You can see the little feathers in his hair. Just iconic things. It had to be Lu Bu as soon as you saw those bits in his hair. But he's a bit smaller than I thought. A lot of, usually when Lu Bu is shown, he's pretty big man. But then again, maybe they want to go with a more realistic look, I guess. So you see, he drives in the battle. Even though he's an important man um, to Dong Zhou, he drives right in. Cao Cao sees this. And it has to be, it has to be Cao Cao. It has to be. Um... I'm I'm ninety five percent sure that Cao Cao. Did I say it could be I could be wrong, it could be end up being Zhuge Liang and they got the time wrong and they just wanted it for the trailer. Because he does seem to be talking a lot with uh Lu Bei. So you can see he kind of looks to Lu Bei. But then again, if I remember correctly, that's what Cao Cao does anyway. He's kind of in charge of the attack on Dong Zhao. So we can see there Lu Bei sends his brothers in to take on Lu Bu, Zhang, uh, Zhang Fei, and Guan Yu. This is a battle of titans you would be about to be witnessing. Um, I guess I might as well play a little bit here. So you can see they never give up. And it's the whole legendary lord system from Warhammer is going to work perfectly in Free Kingdoms. It just fits so well. I'm wondering, though how they're going to do things like this. Like, are you going to be able to have in your army Zhang Fei, Guan Yu, and Lu Bei? So are, like, Guan Yu and Zhang Fei going to work, like, as minor lords, where they can go in the army of Lu Bei? Or are they just going to be legendary lords, like in Warhammer, and you just got to attack with both armies to get them in the same battle? I I'm not sure. Maybe they'll rework something. They haven't done it in Total War Warhammer. You know, a lot of people are saying, can we have legendary heroes and stuff in that? And they never did it. And they haven't done it so far, really. So I, I think it's unlikely they'll do that. They'll probably just all be legendary lords. Um, but I'm really excited. This is exactly the sort of thing I want to be seeing. The exact time period. I'm interested to see how 
they do the different factions, how they're going to make them diverse, how they're going to make them different. Are they really going to go into the, the small details of the different regions of China? I mean, that would be great. And obviously, this trailer is a tiny part. There are like hundreds of characters in the Three Kingdoms book. Um, obviously, they're not going to, sadly, they're not going to make all of them into lords, I would guess. But we're definitely going to get the main different lords. So we can look forward to seeing people like the Sun family. Uh, that is actually my favorite, the Wu kingdom. Uh, Yuan Shao. That, I'm look, I'm look, I hope they do him well. He is a really interesting character um, that loses out to Cao Cao. Um, but there's so much they can do with this. I'm really excited. Um, I have to admit, it's the most excited I've been for Total War game in a long time. I love the Three Kingdoms. I thought I'd just share a little bit of information to people who maybe wanted to hear it. Maybe some people watched the trailer and were like, okay, I don't really know Three Kingdoms very well. I don't know much about it. And I want to know more. So I want to know how this trailer works out. Who, who are these people? What do they do? Um, maybe if people want, if you tell me in the comment section, if you do, I'll make some lore videos about the different factions in Free Kingdoms and the different individuals, Free Kingdoms, of potential people or we might see. And the ones we have seen maybe do a whole lore videos on those guys because I, I, I just love Free Kingdoms. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I just saw the trailer and this is my initial reaction. Basically, this is literally five minutes after watching the trailer just because I was so excited. I felt I had to make a video. Maybe I'll look back and go, actually, that's something different. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that with Cao Cao, it has to be. You can't have a trailer with him not in it. And I hope, like I said, they do have some of the smaller characters in it. Like a lot of Cao Cao, small, the people who follow him, that there's so many that are iconic. Uh, Zhang He, um, I, I can't remember. Um, I, 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 I don't want to say some of the names because I don't want to mispronounce the names. That's my biggest problem. Um, do apologize if I did pronounce anything wrong. Like I say, I'm, I'm not a Chinese speaker, so it can, it can be difficult sometimes. Uh, I know a lot of people get Cao Cao wrong. It's pronounced, it's spelt as C-A-O. And when I was a kid, I used to go Cao Cao, but it's not. It's like T-S-A-O, uh, Cao Cao. And Zhuge Liang, I used to pronounce completely wrong before as well. But hope you enjoyed. Tell me in the comment section if you would love to see more information about the three kingdoms and what we could see in this game and yeah i guess we'll just have to wait for uh what is it fall fall 2018 not even that far away which is what i love it's not even in a year's time so i'll see you around ng out